Hi, my name is Deborah Johnson. This is lesson two on moving from away from fleshly thinking toward spiritual thinking or moving from legalism or the law to grace. So this is um, where we left off last time was talking about what your role as the listener or the student is. And uh, we talked last time about having a readiness to will, to do something, and then following through to do it. Determining within yourself your choice, God gave you free volition to actually go about and do, do what you know is right and move forward in a positive direction. Um, we're going to add to that today and again try to keep the um, study to 15 minutes um, and before we get started let's pray Heavenly Father thank you for this opportunity I pray for myself as a teacher to hold forth your word faithfully in love and for the listener to listen with an uh, ear desiring to hear and um, motivated to um, do action or to uh, put into effect in uh, application of what the doctrines are. We just praise you and thank you that it's your power and glory as we yield in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, this next issue, as far as what your responsibility as the student or as the listener of these videos is, is that there is also a need for having an awareness of your mind um, to things and uh, meditation. So let's go to Romans 6, 12 to 13. And in chapter 6, we'll pick it up uh, in verse 12. However, this section is all about the believer's identity and the very beginning of understanding who we are in Christ, our close identity with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And so what we're trying to do here is uh, jump in and find out one of the key things that Paul teaches us. Um, in verse 12 and 13, it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And this sin is not necessarily just, um, you know, something physical, something that you do, deeds, but it can be also your thinking. Sin starts in the mind with a thought. For example, in Matthew, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ talked about even the thought of sin. The thought of committing adultery is as if you already committed adultery. Therefore, if you look on a woman to lust after her or a man to lust after him, um, if you give place to that thought, you're on the road to sin. And that's a hard saying, but Jesus came came back to earth because Israel didn't understand that. They were trying to keep the letter of the law. They didn't do the act of adultery, but in their mind they were committing sin all the time. And he wanted to relay the fact that none of us can keep ourselves from sin. It's only by yielding to God and allowing his work to, to work within us, his power and wisdom that can enable us not to sin, even in thought. So, and of course there's the verse that it says, leading captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's in uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and uh, tried for a long time to do that and realize it's Christ in you. You can't do it. We need to rest. That's, uh, that's grace. Rest in what Christ did on the cross and yield to his way of doing it. That's what Romans 6, 7, and 8 teach us. However, we're picking up right here where it says, So reckon yourselves dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can have resurrection life in this world. 
we can live it as we understand this process of yielding and the why in the road. Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. In fact, um, okay, and verse 13, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We are a vessel that God uses or desires to use for his honor and glory once you get saved. Um, a believer who doesn't know that will go their way down the road to really just live after their flesh and they don't really realize how much God is uh, desiring and depending on us as his own members, members of the body of Christ, to, to be here on his behalf, to be ambassadors, to hold forth the word. Um, but instead, if we're not aware of some of these things, we go about our own idea of what we want to do in this life without real understanding of what God wants for us. Why did he save us? Not just to, so that we wouldn't go to the lake of fire. That is a great benefit, that if we trust the blood of Christ, simply believe it by faith. Romans 3 teaches that. Uh, we'll talk at the end a little bit more of that, I hope. So we just believe it. And then once we're saved, God does, has a whole bunch of things he wants to teach us. In Paul's letters, it's at the very beginning of the first book laid out in Paul's epistles, Romans to Philemon, about how you're just with God. Romans 1 through 5. But starting in chapter 6, all the way through the end of Romans, chapter 16. Um, he is teaching us what he wants for us, what he desires. He wants us to grow up and become all he made us to be and access all the resources, power, and wisdom that he has given us. And so he doesn't want us to continue to yield unto our flesh and live carnally according to the world no one will even see any difference between you and an unbeliever. But instead, he wants us to be his instrument, not an instrument and tool of Satan, but an instrument of God, of righteousness here. So that is an awareness that we need to mind and meditate on those things, God's things not things of this world. The more we spend time in this world on issues, things of this world, that will be what we're putting in our mind. Uh, the Lord Jesus uh, tell, told Paul to have our mind renewed as um, being li living sacrifices. In Romans 12, we need our mind renewed. That's replacing what's in our mind with God's word, which pushes out carnal or fleshly thinking. If we spend more time in worldly thinking, worldly wisdom, that pushes out God's word or any, any uh, exalted is more important so that we are not going to do what God wants. God wants us down here. We're spending much more time exalting fleshly things. And as long as we do that, these things will stay at the bottom of your um, motivation. Uh, you'll be motivated to do and continue these things. Okay, let's go on to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. What is God's will for you? There's many, many passages, but... I happen to be reading this morning in these two passages as I've been reading through um, Paul's epistles. And by the way, you could read through Paul's epistles um, every month if you just read three chapters a day. It's a, it's a goal. I wish I had done that years ago. Um, a pastor recommended it to me, and I didn't do it. 
Uh, I do do that now. I've been doing it for about a year and a half, and it has changed so many things. It has helped me in so many ways. Um, anyway, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, let's just pick it up uh, in verse 1. And God's will for us, it says here in verse 1, We then, as workers together with him, with Christ, beseech you, also, that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Don't make it void. Don't take it in and then make it of none effect in your life. That's what he's saying. It's, it's an admonition or a desire. He, Paul's saying to him, don't do that. Um, he's beseeching in grace. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now, don't put off like tomorrow I'll do that, or yeah, I'll read God's word um, next week, or in a year, or when this situation happens. Do it now. Change up your life to do what you know is what God wants. Do it now. Uh, that's what it's saying. It's the accepted time. The day of salvation's now. God could take us in the rapture any moment. And so he desires for us to live for him, make an impact on those around you. It says, verse 3, going on, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. You're actually... Uh, to do all things unto God and not unto men. And you don't want to um, allow others to see that God's word is not working in you. Um, the ministry would be blamed and they can get derailed. In love for God and for his desire for you to be his ambassador, it says, give no offense in anything. Think about it. It's not easily done. Um, in the flesh, we try, 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 and that's the law, and we will eventually fail, fail, fail. Uh, so it's not about trying real hard to be good. That's not what I'm saying. I can't do it. But rather, it's the yielding, yielding unto God and his ways, getting the word in your mind to push out um, legalism, the law, push out carnality, and replace it with the love of Christ the desire and motivation to serve him. Verse 4, But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. And he makes a whole long list here. I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, I encourage you, go ahead, go back and read this passage. Um, do it for the Lord. That's God's will for us. And then just um, a chapter later in chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We cannot be holy by trying hard in a religious attempt in our own works to try, try, try. That's the flesh. That's make, making yourself look good to everyone else, knowing that we still have ungodly thoughts. There's only one way to do it. Read God's word. Take the word in and yield to it. That's God's way. It's as simple as that and as hard as that. It needs to be um, determining to do God's will, not yours. Not allowing your flesh to rule, but yield to God. Um, if you're going to wait until your flesh feels ready to do this, you'll be waiting your whole life. Your flesh will not be ready. It does not want to give up things that it likes to do. And you can't do it, really, um, and be pleasing to God. As you yield and replace carnal thinking, God does it in you, in your inner man, as you take in and believe the doctrine. Okay. Um, 
Unfortunately, we're going to have to stop there because we're just about out of time. But I want you to think about those things and realize that the salvation message, I guess I'm going to take one more minute to review that, is in Romans 3.22, uh, starting in 22. Um, make sure that you are clear on your salvation. It's simple. It's not going to church. It's not reading the Bible. It's not going to church. It's not doing a whole list of any things. And it doesn't, you don't have to be good enough. In fact, he sent this gospel message because we're sinners. We fall short of the glory of God. We can't do it. But let me read here. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there's no difference. It's it's your faith. You take your faith and you place it in the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He went to that cross, suffered and died in your place. In great love, because he loved you, he did that. Taking upon himself, even becoming sin for you. Paying the penalty so that all you had to do is believe it. He offers it unto all. But it's only upon all them that believe. Simply by faith, do that today so that you know you have eternal life. And when you do that, the moment you do that, you get the Holy Ghost. You are given so many things. Let me just read a few of them in chapter 5 of Romans, verse 1. Therefore, being, having that possession, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. No sin barrier. We have total peace with God. No matter what we do, we have peace with God because Christ paid all sin, past, present, and future sins that you do. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Please think about that. Think about this salvation. Understand that his blood paid it all, and all you have to do is believe it. Then the Holy Spirit can teach your spirit the deep things of God. Um, so think on these things. Look up these verses for yourself. Spend some time in meditation. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I pray for each listener to really think about these things and determine in their heart to move from being in the flesh, carnal, having worldly thinking to move toward living unto you by your will for you and in great love for what you've accomplished on that cross for us, that you love us as a father loves his only child. Lord, we just pray this and desire to learn more in your precious son's name. Amen.